this is the 14th video of the series business forecasting and in this video we will try to see how we can use multiple regression in case of time series data earlier in one of our lectures we have seen multiple regression equation and the equation looks like uh, this one so first of all you see this is the dependent variable this one is the intercept of the model then these are the slopes starting from b b1 up to bn and x x1 xn these are the independent variables chosen in the model so those of you who have not seen that video for you i have given you the link in the i button in the top right corner so we will use this particular equation only in case of time series but in case of time series y will be sales or whatever uh, the time series variable is there then x that means the first independent variable that means this one this one will be our period number that means 1 2 3 4 time series period number that will be your first in independent variable and then from next independent variable onward like x1 x2 x2 xn and so on this will be our dummy binary integer variables binary integer variables means it will take 0 or 1 values and they will be representing the seasons so that means this particular model multiple regression model can be used to specify both the trend that means the period number as well as the seasonality but let us see how this x1 x2 xn can represent the seasons so for that the nomenclature is like this x1 is equal to 1 only when it is january and x1 is equal to 0 otherwise so we were dealing with 12 months data in the last two lectures that means uh, in time series decomposition part 1 and part 2 if you have not seen that lecture also so i will give the i button here also so in that uh, in those two lectures we have seen a particular kind of data time series data where we used to have the seasonality when the number of season was equal to 12 so that means 12 months so this definition is in that context only that means if x1 is equal to 1 that means it is January or otherwise for any other month x1 is 0 if x2 is equal to 1 that means it is February and for any other month x2 is equal to 0 and so on so now this goes up to x11 when it is November and x11 is equal to 0 otherwise that means if it is any other month then x1 is equal to 0 now it may be little bit uh, intuitive to assume that there will be another variable called x12 because we have 12 months so x12 is equal to 1 only when it is December and x12 is equal to 0 otherwise you can think like that but actually this is not the case so no such x12 variable is there why because it is not necessary to define any x12 variable when all other variables like x1 to x11 is equal to 0 that itself means that it is December I repeat again so for example if you have x1 is equal to 0 x2 is equal to 0 x3 is equal to 0 x4 is equal to 0 all are 0 x11 is also equal to 0 that means it is neither January nor February nor March and not November also so therefore it is December only it can be December only so this will be more clear if you see the representation in tabular form so suppose this is january then i have x1 is equal to 1 and otherwise x1 is 0 if it is february then x2 is equal to 1 otherwise all in for all months x2 is equal to 0 and so on this is goes this goes up, up to november and now see in december we don't have any other variable only thing that we have is all the variables that means x1 to x11 are equal to 0 so in december 
all your x1 x2 up to x11 is equal to 0 that is how december is defined so therefore the general thumb rule is the number of dummy variables that is to be chosen here is the number of seasons minus 1 so in this case we have 12 months see 12 months data we are dealing with 12 months data so we will have 11 variables and if you have a quarterly data suppose you have a quarterly seasonality so four seasons are there so in that case it will be four minus one that means three variables three dummy variables so this is how you will define the dummy variables in case of multiple regression for time series analysis now this explanation is complete now we will directly go to our spreadsheet and implement the model there only so this is our spreadsheet in sheet one we had the seasonal average method that was discussed in the last to last video that means video number 12 and in sheet two you have the classical decomposition implementation that was our last lecture that means video number 13 and now in sheet 3 we will be using the same data but now we will implement the multiple regression method so before doing anything let us first develop the time series plot i am selecting the entire c column and then going to insert charts and this particular option so this is your time series data before doing anything so now unlike the other two methods i will take the period column from here to here insert cut cell so i take this period column from here and paste it in here so once this is done now i will define the dummy variable so remember x1 was your january and then this will go up to x11 so x1 x2 x11 where 11 is your november so now write down the ones and zeros one zero so first of all write zero for everything zero zero now see for january x1 will be equal to one one then for february x2 will, 2 will be 1 x3 for march x4 for april in this way diagonally enter the ones here and this sequence will repeat itself now see again i am stating here for december you don't have to enter anything it will be simply zero all zero so this is one set of total seasonal entry so once this is done make sure you copy this down to all other seasons also so copy it until the end so remember we had the 1960 up to 1960 we have the data and for 1961 we need to predict the forecast so here also 1961 also you should enter this data so this is the data is now complete so now you have to implement the multiple regression model so for that go to data data analysis all these things are actually discussed in the multiple regression video so make sure that you watch that one so go to regression and then ok then in input y range you will enter the forecast variable that means the passengers so enter the b column here b1 to b145 why 145 because 1961 we don't have the data up to 1960 so make sure that you enter up to 145 then input x range in x range you will have to enter all the variables together that means period is one variable the first variable then x1 to x11 so you will enter all at, at once so select this c to n and up to the end end means not 1961 but 1960 end that means 145 so c1 to n 145 the entire entire data see this one 
now you will check levels because you see we have to enter levels here because i have entered the data in such a way that b1 and c1 is also included which means the row headings are also included and therefore if row headings are included in here in in this entry then you have to make sure that the levels is checked here now once this is done nothing else need to be done just click on ok so in a fresh worksheet the regression models will be generated so this is it this is the intercept this is the slope coefficient uh, corresponding to the period number and these are the slope coefficients corresponding to the seasons that means january february and up to november now what i will do is i will enter a fresh row here blank row so once this is done i will select the entire setup coefficients from here and then go here and then i will paste not simple pasting paste special here and then transpose and ok so i am making sure that all the coefficients are actually here just above this row so that i can calculate the forecast here how we will calculate forecast so this is the forecast first of all you will make the sum product sum product of these coefficients make sure that you press f4 to make it fixed c1 to n1 that should be fixed and then this one so what i am actually doing here is these are the slope coefficients and these are the values so i am making sure that the pro sum of the products are calculated here plus the intercept so intercept is also fixed so make sure that you press the f4 so this is the forecast so what i am doing here is i let me just state it like this so you know that the equation is like this y is equal to your b0 plus bx plus b1x1 plus b2x2 plus up to bn xn now for this part b1x1 up to bn xn i am using the sum product function this is the sum product not only this part this is this is also included this is also included so not this one so from bx to up to bn xn this is calculated using this sum product function how you see sum product of this range cn c1 n1 and then c3 n3 this is the first sum product plus the b1 what is b1 b1 is your intercept so that means this one so this is how you calculate the forecast and simply copy down now note that this is automatically calculated for 1961 also check it here so this is calculated for 1961 also so no problem now what we will do is like the last video i will select the entire forecast column just select it copy that means control c then i will select the graph and then control v so see here this is your, this blue line was your actual value and now this orange color line is your forecast so now can you see something here unlike the other two methods the other two methods and the model was very good fit for the multiplicative model so you see here the actual data was the extent of seasonality was increasing along with the trend and the forecast was also like that forecast was also matching with the uh, actual data here also in seasonal average method also that was true but now here you see the forecast is actually not uh, 
taking the same path of multi uh, multiplicative model that means you can see here the multiplicative model is going like this going like this this is your multiplicative model actual data i am saying and now your forecast is simply like this so see this is equidistant from start to end this is equidistant whereas you in actual data it is increasing the extent of seasonality is increasing so what i mean to say is this particular method this multiple regression model for seasonality is not good for multiplicative data especially when the extent of seasonality is increasing with time you actually should not use or cannot use this particular model that means the multiple regression model for predicting the forecast so you should go for either seasonal average method or the central moving average method that means uh, the classical decomposition or the best method is winters method so among these three you should select if there is an addi additive model that means your extent of seasonality is not increasing or decreasing along with the trend then you can use this particular model so this is a real quick and dirty and easy model to use but not to use not to be used for multiplicative models so that's it that's all about this model so this was just an introduction of multiple regression method for time series analysis hope you have understood the video contents and if you have any doubts please use the comment section to inform me i will try to reply and uh, thanks for watching this video and we will meet again in the next video where we will start a new concept which is called the arima until then thank you very much